my friends. Got a lot to cover today. Going to get through it as fast as I possibly can. Um, wanted to get this out before the uh, big old Super Bowl kicks off. Um, I like both teams that are in it tonight. Let's just go out there and say I got the Rams. I'd like to see Stafford get his first ring. Um, I think Joey B is awesome, but I also think he'll have a lot more chances. And poor Matthew Stafford was stuck in Detroit you know, for so many years. I, I'd like to see him get it done. So that is going to be my Super Bowl pick. Um, if you are a gambling person, I also like the Rams, uh, minus four and a half. I just think their defensive line is going to chew up since he's offensive line. So, um, I just, I think the Cincinnati Bengals are real popular underdogs and popular underdogs go to get slaughtered. So, um, you know, guys, this channel is not financial advice. It's also not gambling advice, but, uh, if you have a little bit of fun, that, that would be the pick that I would go with. So, uh, when it comes to the chart let's start out I want to look at some technical patterns so from a pure technical pattern um, this is the wedge that I have always had drawn I personally prefer it um, uh, another popular way that I've seen people draw wedges is I think it's like this yep uh, and I don't have a problem with this one I just like the uh, the way that I've got it done just because I feel like it gives me a little bit more uh, touch points it includes the all-time high so anyway uh, this is gonna be the wedge that we have been tracking for a brief moment last week we did break above it but unfortunately it did not hold and to an extent I'm actually okay with that and to an extent I'm actually glad um, I don't want to come to try to break this line unless we really have a solid volume push to go with it. Um, so getting rejected off and, and getting pushed back down and you know consolidating right here before another uh, attempt at it. And you guys know the deal. You know Amy likes her uh, her four tries to actually break through. So it's no surprise at all that that we got rejected off of the top of that trend. But that's going to be the first big one that I'm going to be looking for. Um, from a pure candle perspective too um this is not a great candle okay this is kind of a spinning top slash morning star um you know this this candle very much indicates uh indecision and so i think we could see uh some downside um at least some of this week for sure whether it's we come down kind of monday or tuesday and then wednesday or thursday start ramping up or if we try to you know push up towards the top maybe like monday or tuesday again and kind of get rejected off but um either way you know just like with any and all candlestick patterns just like with anything in life you know nothing is a slam dunk um you know i remember whenever i first started watching um i used to watch a lot of like poker on espn and everything like that when it was real popular and there'd be they'd always have the cards in the bottom and there would be the percentages next to it and sometimes a dude would have like a 98 percent chance because a guy had like a one or two outer and and that would still hit so um guys nothing in life is is a slam dunk and so i i like to approach things from a very realistic cautious spacious i hope you do the same I have been seeing a whole lot of hopium going on uh, Twitter and people sharing this post where a dude's like, trust me, bro, I'm a financial advisor. 500K is the absolute floor for AMC. Um, and I'm telling you guys right now, and I do not care how many followers I lose um, because I say this, but for me personally, that is bananas, okay? I'm not saying that mathematically it's not possible, and I would love to see it happen for everybody, um, but we just, we won't be doing that type of crazy talk on, on this channel. Um, anyway, we'll worry about that. Let, how about this? How about this, my friends? How about we just worry about, let's start getting towards, you know, the upside and close to some all-time highs. How about we just worry about that first before we worry about hundreds of thousands of shares per share, all right? So sorry, I just I've been seeing the same post and it just it drives me bonkers. All right? Let's focus on reality. So chart-wise, descending wedge, falling wedge, going to be looking at that. Any big breakouts that we see, we want to see a whole lot of volume to go with it. So um, while I love the fact that, you know, we were getting pretty close, we got some 75, and I think one day got up to like just below 100. I think it was the following day. Yeah, we got a 98. To see big moves upwards, guys, and, and for me to really be on like, it's here, like another leg up might be real soon, I'm going to want to see like some 
two to three hundred minimal, you know, volume days. Um, we, you know, we talked about back over here, like on May the 13th, um, that was 300 million volume. You know, some of these days leading up uh, to the big January move. Where was that one? Yeah, 256, 162, 181, 268. So we want to see some big old volume coming in. Uh, another thing about that candle too, it was on, you know, we're kind of getting a little toppy looking and we had some decreasing volume. So I don't know. I mean, once again, we'll, we'll see. But, um, you know, coming back down, sort of retesting some of this wouldn't surprise me. On the the big time kahuna, one that I'll be looking for is this one, okay? So this is really, once we get on the northern side of this line right here is going to really tell me we're starting to, we're gonna start making some moves. So for instance, going into this week, that's gonna be in the $25 range. So that'll be one that we'll be watching. Um, our support line from the buy button collapse to here. And, and there's lots of ways that you can draw this one too, guys. I'd be willing to bet that you can, you know, just from, you know, right here, getting all this. Uh, mm, not really. That just doesn't look near as good. I mean, you could do it like that. That would be another way that you could draw this line. So um, it, at the end of the day, there, there's lots of ways that you can do the trend line. But I've just I've always done it, and because even you come back here when retail was really first starting to get involved in AMC and everything like that, this this line also also provides some solid resistance lines along the way. Um, so mainly that's what I'm going to be looking at from that standpoint. Um, also, too, we've got this big uh, you know bull flag. However you want to look at it, channel. You know you can really draw it from here. Yeah, like that, okay. So there's this one too. So like I said, there's there's lots of positive ways that, that we can look at what AMC is doing right now. Also too, on my video a few days ago, um, we were looking at this right here is essentially kind of the world's biggest uh, inverted head and shoulders. Um, that came from inverting the chart like this. Um, like I said real quick in that video, if you just looked at AMC's chart inverted, okay, and you were getting up here and you were meeting all this stuff right in here, okay? I mean, look at this. So you start meeting all of this upper resistance right here and it kept trying to break through, break through and just wasn't going to happen. You would see this as, dude, this thing, this thing is about to just dump. You know, where you're about to see, you know, some of this and then catch that support. And like I said, you're going to see that move right there. Well, that's great. Let's do it. As far as I'm concerned, let's just, let's just have it look like this. So uh, every now and then, you know, sometimes flipping the chart upside down is a good way to look at it. Um, as far as our fibs go. Let's look at, so this is the one that I think is most valid, and we'll get to in a second why. But from the top, so our 618 has acted as really, 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 really solid support. And you can see right here, the 0.5 is now acting as resistance. But once again, guys, anytime someone tells you, you know, TA can't work on a manipulated stock, I've always said, once again, they all are manipulated stocks. I agree some of them are more manipulated than others. But if you just look at this right here, you can see all these different FIB levels right here. AMC has traded around them and respected them. Look right here. Look at it. The 618 was big time resistance right here until it broke out. Now what is it? Well, it's big time support right here. So just don't listen to the noise. Use your brain. Don't listen to people online. Except this guy, right? No, I'm just kidding. Don't listen to me either. Trade your own plan. I'm just an idiot online. Uh, but that's going to be one. And the reason that one is going to be good and important is because if you look at, so before the run in June, 
up to the top. It broke below, didn't quite touch the 618. I think uh, I think I was watching Dave's video the other day. Like if you took it to the pre-market high or something like that, it, it was almost there. But um, coming down to almost the 618 um, before, and then you can see right here, the 382 is what really propelled us right here um, to start you know, pushing back up. So keep an eye on the fibs on the short term. Uh, AMC really likes the uh, the 786s, okay? And then on the macro, she likes to gravitate more towards the 618. So if we go in here, let's just look at the 15 minute. Um, if we see some retracement, so let's just go from our lowest point right here to our top right here. Zoom in just a little bit more get an idea so you can see once we started dumping on Friday because it looked like we were gonna go to war guys I'm surprised it, it seems like it's been very quiet on that front um, I don't watch the news at all but I do obviously pay attention to what's going on on Twitter and I haven't seen anything other than I think I saw Biden and Putin had a phone call together um, I, I've seen everybody say we're going to war or Russia's going to invade Ukraine, except for Ukraine and Russia saying that. So I saw some evacuations taking place. So I'll, I'll be honest, I just don't know on that front. So um, I haven't seen anything catastrophic or anything like that. So And, and because of that, we might see the markets get a little rippy uh, come Monday, um, especially since we saw this sell-off. But as you can see, the sell-off happened, and then it started providing resistance when it was trying to uh, bust back over. So if we do retrace, um, the 382 is going to be 1770. Um, I would expect to see support in there. The 0.5 is 1679. Uh, the 618 is 1592. And the 786, we just talked about that, um, would be 1477. And look what the, the 786 would do. The 786 would essentially be providing double bottom areas. Um, do I? The only way I think we'll see that low is if you know we see a massive you know market retrace. Um, if the entire market starts getting drugged down for a while on Friday, in fact, I even tweeted it out for a while on Friday, we were not following the rest of the market. GameStop and AMC were moving up pretty good even when the rest of the market was getting pulled down. Um, it wasn't until it really started looking like we were going to go to you know, war, Russia was going to invade Ukraine, that, that then the entire market, but everything else was red. I tweeted out a picture. Everything was red except for GameStop and AMC on my watch list. And I pretty much watch all the big ones. So uh, FIB levels, that's going to be what we're looking for um, support-wise. All the way down to, you know, this, you know, $14 area. Other than our spring right here, this $14, $14.50 area has provided a whole lot of support. So um, real quick, I want to move to my other video. Dang, I don't remember which one it was. Sorry guys, this might take a second. Cause I always pull up, oh sweet, first time's the charm. Um, so I said in my video yesterday, essentially red box, blue box, blue box, blue box, yellow box are all the same fractal, okay? Um, I Once again, can't recommend enough to go watch Booksy. He has essentially broken the map of AMC down into like 10 categories and we are constantly just on rinse and repeat it's like groundhog day and we're at different points of his map on multiple different time frames um, but essentially if we are where i think i have my red arrow um, the purple arrows once again i talked about how i believe every single fractal has a moment of a buy button collapse i really don't think the buy button collapse area let me put it this way. I think the buy button was taken away because they were getting caught off guard on the January run. I think where it fell to and where it found support was not an accident. Okay. And once again, I talked about how the red box is essentially like a little accordion um, where it's super squished, where the yellow were playing it out over a very expanded period of time and then on the June run they just weren't able to quite bring it down below but you can see right here in January it uh, came below its buy button collapse area so if we have found 
our floor, we would be pushing up to our little ramp up where we consolidate, where then we start pushing up. Um, I've labeled those levels here at right around that $28 to $30 range, and then um, the new sign of strength once we get up there into the $52 range. Once again, I don't want to talk about when I think a new all-time high would happen until we break back up into this trading range in here so that upper 40s to low 50s is going to be what i'm looking for and what are we going to be looking for we're going to be looking for the volume to go with it so once we really start breaking up into there and as you can see those moments happen very quickly back here so i'm not saying it can't happen very quickly but i am saying until we start hitting some of these levels i'm not i don't even want to talk about you know all time highs on a very serious basis. Like I said, let's just <laughs> let's just get back to the 30s and 40s first. How about that? All right. So, um, but I have talked about my target for the next um, all time high is the 3.618, which is right around that that 250 mark. Um, but lots of things have to happen before that happens. But essentially, this is kind of what I'm looking at as far as my cycle chart. I try to keep it as as simple as possible. Um, going back, the last thing that I want to go over is going to be some of the indicators. All right. So purely from a, yeah, I mean, like I said, that's just making a nice double bottom here. What would be the, you know, the, the head of the inverse head and shoulders being a nice double bottom. I mean, I, it's, it's hard to think that not necessarily tomorrow, but sorry guys, Super Bowl Sunday, everything's going on. Uh, but it, it's really hard to see over the next few weeks or so not at least making this move. Um, but real quick, um, let's look at the indicators and then we'll get you out of here. So um, as far as the EMAs go, the, S, the exponential moving averages, I almost said estimated again. Um, right here, we wanna start recovering these. So we got the 20, the 50, um, the light blue is, or the turquoise color, if you will, is going to be the 100, and then the blue is going to be the 200, okay? And these are gonna be some things that um, real technical traders who are waiting on the sidelines, who are not apes or anything like that, if, as soon as we start really recovering these, and we start recovering these with volume, what I really like is when we did get the 20, um, you know, that was one of our bigger volume days. And then, so you can see we broke through it. Here, let me just zoom in. So once again, I can prove TA doesn't work on AMC. Let's see what I did there. Um, but, so once we broke through it, then the following day, it acted as support, even when it tried to get pushed down. So um, next thing we're gonna be going for is gonna be that orange one, that's, which is the 100, um, which going into this week is gonna be at about 22 um, $23 range. So that's going to be like to see that happening for sure. So, um, but recovering these guys right here is how we're going to see um, big solid moves to the upside. So we'll keep those on watch. Um, as far as the visible range goes, so let me zoom out here. Once again, guys, each one of these little bars is kind of the volume traded in that area. So here's where AMC. Um, hit the stock exchange and you can see our basically I added a lot more rows right here so at this point when I added let me see how many rows I've got here so I've got 200 rows all right so the one that we bounced right here the hardest off of the one that we bounced the hardest off of is the biggest one other than all the way down here at the three dollar mark and then you can see it's, it's just causing us to not catapult, but definitely have a strong reaction, which is strong reaction with volume, what we want to see. So I think we're going to start moving back up here into these air pockets. You can see right here, if, but bam, all right. So you can see why we're starting to get rejected. Holy cow, I hadn't zoomed this far out on it. But look, my friends, make this line a little bit bigger. Let's go white with it. So right here, whoo doggy. This is an important line to get over. You can see it acted one, two, three, four, five. Five times it acted as support. 
And then once it broke down and it came back up and when it got rejected right here, oh lordy, oh lordy, did it get sent down, all right? So, man, this is, we need to get on the northern side of this line with some volume. Wow, I hadn't looked at this one. But the nice thing about it is you can see this volume gap right here. Look at this. This is like the biggest volume gap that we have other than, of course, all-time highs. All right? So it makes more sense to go this way. That's what I always try to say. It makes so much more sense for Composite Man to push us this way than to go back down here where it's already been heavily traded. It makes more sense to go this way. And all these institutions that have been accumulating shares down here and everything like that, they want to see it this way. Yes, are they making money lending out those shares that are getting dumped back on the market? Yes, but their ultimate goal is not to lose money on the stock price. Their ultimate goal is to get the markup, okay? That's what's going to happen, in my opinion, who is a moron and not a financial advisor. So take that for what it is. But this line right here, we want to break this line with some volume and, and things can get, get cooking in a hurry. All right. Now, a couple more indicators. So that's going to be the visible range. So this was a new one for me. It's called the vortex indicator. It's just a momentum indicator, guys. Um, whoops, scrolling on the wrong one. Uh, but it's a momentum indicator. Basically, what you want to see is if the stock is going to be going up, you want to see the blue line on top. If the stock is going down, the, the red line is going to be on top. When you have its crossing, you want to see this type of move. So that way, when it crosses, it's just an indication that you're going to see some big move up. You can see back when that has happened before. Right here. Okay, the big run, the big September run, of course, the big January run. So, and look what we got right here. Big Tom crossing, moving almost parabolic right here. All right, so that's a new one for me, but keep my eye on it. Let's go look at the RSI. So like I always tell you guys, anything above 70 is going to be considered overbought. Anything below 30 is considered oversold. So as of right now, we are sitting right in the middle. We are at neutral territory, essentially. So we've got plenty of room to run as far as the RSI is concerned. I mean, you can see once it, you know, once it gets toppy out here, once it gets super overcooked, um, we definitely get some kick down moments. All right. Um, I see a bunch of people using this right here so let me get my little circle machine this right here okay um and kind of this move right here and this move right here all have some certain similarities once again i have always talked about how um, we're playing out more of the january style move than the june style move so this move let me just get rid of this one right here. So if you look at the RSI, those are very similar moves other than this one got to a point where it was a little bit more oversold. But other than that, very similar uh, moves on the RSI indicator, the relative strength index. Let's get rid of that one now. MACD looks awesome. Curling up. Blue line essentially going parabolic. Um, right here, once again, you want solid dark green bars. You can see right here, solid dark green bars it means your stock is, uh, the momentum is still good. Once these bars start to turn the, the lighter green color, that could be when we start losing momentum. You know, once the blue line starts heading down, um, that's gonna be a sign for pullback, all right? And then, OBV, the on balance volume. So you can see in the January to June run, it stayed relatively flat, never even came back down after its buy button collapse. So once again, for me, 
going back to where I said it on the fractal wise, so this is where I believe we had our buy button collapse moment. But you can see it still didn't even come down here and touch this area. It stayed above, okay? I've also seen several people, and I think it's a great way to illustrate it, um, basically drawing their pennants like uh, this. Whoa, whoa. So and then right here, it broke underneath. And from here, we got this. From here, we got this. Broke underneath. So right here, oops, my fault. So right here, we broke underneath and are curling up. Broke underneath, hopefully gonna curl right on up, all right? So that's what we're looking for on the OBV. Um, I think, and I agree, most people are saying, you know, once we start getting above this, you know, 5 billion over here on the OBV, then that's going to be like go time. You can also draw the same thing right here. This one's a little bit more of a descending wedge, but you can see broke down, curled up, gone. So that's happened one, two, and maybe three times. Uh, you know, I kind of went full tinfoil hat on Adam Aaron's tweet. Um, he got out there and he talked about how um, he's got uh, 2.3 million shares either already or coming his way. He didn't say specifically. Uh, most people agreed that those are going to be coming to him based off performance uh, bonuses. And so, but he said, I really hope those short sellers are wrong, wrong, wrong. And I said, wrong one time, January, wrong two times, June, wrong three times, hasn't happened yet. So once again, that's pure tinfoil. But at the same time, I do believe that both Adam Aaron and Ryan Cohen tweet more than what they tweet, if you know what I'm saying. There's just certain things that they flat out cannot say um, because of stock manipulation and everything like that. Even though their stocks are manipulated like crazy 24 seven, they can't come out and actually say anything. So um, overall, my friends, that is what I'm looking for. I think this week, if, if the overall market gets rippy this week and everything like that, we are going to see good upside from AMC. Um, you know, there's there's a in in well thought out theory I might add that basically you know all these small and mid cap companies um, that are in this you know five to ten billion dollar range. There's so many companies that have lost anywhere between fifty to eighty percent of their value um, here recently, and so uh, that money is going to rotate out of the mega caps back into the small and the mid caps, and we could es essentially see like a small mid cap kind of everything squeeze, if you will, uh, which would make the most sense when it comes to AMC and GameStop and everything like that. If, if you were trying to not have it be super FOMO issues or anything along those lines, you would kind of want to let everything sort of go at the same time so that way retail money is spread out as much as it possibly can. Um, because like I always say, my friends, you know the deal, not everybody um, you know, is an ooga booga ape or anything along those lines. There are a lot of people out there who just, you know, they're not, they're not just buy and hold people or anything along those lines. So that's basically what I'm going to be looking for for the week. So we'll keep our eye on the EMAs, the VPR, um, all the indicators, the RSI, um, the MACD, the Vortex. Um, we got to keep our eye big time on volume. If we see big moves, we want big volume to go with it. Um, we'll keep our eyes on you know, the news as far as, and once again, I, like I always say, the news just justifies the move uh, in the prices. And so uh, please follow me on Twitter, Colin underscore Gladman. That's where I'll be tweeting out all my intraday thoughts and looking at the chart and everything along those lines. And you guys know the deal. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Um, tell your friends about it. Helps out the channel. Uh, the more people get good quality information and not just, you know, not just 500k a share the four. I can't stand that stuff. I'm sorry. I really can't. Um, I hope it happens, though. <laughs> I promise you I'll be happy. But um, once again, I, I just, 
people trying to predict things that have literally never happened is just funny to me. So let's go off of what we know and what we can prove, okay? So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, enjoy your Super Bowl. Stay safe. Um, I think overall, like I said, I, I think we've got a good good shot at you know continued upside this week. Yes, there will be pullbacks along the way, but... If, if we see a big, you know, 20, 30% move type of day, we want to see some, you know, 200 plus million volume coming along with it. That's going to be uh, the big thing that I'm going to be looking for. And then I'll make my videos throughout the week. But hope you guys are doing well. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Super Bowl party. Stay safe. I will see you in what will be only a few hours. Have a good one.